again very industrially relevant uh, system that I am going to talk about is uh, uh, basically what I, uh, uh, I like to call uh, what is called uh, continuous time uh, delta sigma data converter. I uh, will give you a quick introduction for those of you who have not seen this uh, before. So, let us say I mean here is something that you have seen before and this is not a delta sigma converter. This is C, this is V i and this is V out, and this is R all right. So, the op amp is ideal and there is negative feedback around the op amp all right. Now, <coughs> let us uh, uh, assume that the circuit is working meaning that none of the voltages or, or currents inside this uh, network go to infinity. So, that if that is the case then what comment can we make about uh, the average current through the capacitor. If you have the average current through the capacitor is 0 all right. If the average current through the capacitor is 0 what comment can we make about the average current here and the average current here both have to be exactly the same and what is the average current flowing through the input resistor it is V i by r on average right. So, V i average by r what is the uh, current flowing through the feedback resistor yeah. So, V out minus V out by r and because the average current through the capacitor is 0 it must follow that V i average must be equal to minus the average value of V out right. All that this is saying is the DC gain is minus 1 right. So, there is nothing new here. Now, what I am going to do, uh, the next thing I am going to do is, uh, is break the loop like this and uh, put a sample and hold here. And uh, so, this is sampled at the sampling period is T s and let us say this therefore, I now call it V out of N T s. So, in other words what this is doing is this is sampling the output of the op amp at every T s and holding that for the rest of the cycle right. So, this is what we do next right. So, uh, what does this uh, what does uh, this mean? What comment can we make now about the average current to the capacitor? has to still be 0 assuming the system is stable uh, and that basically means uh, that the current to the uh, input resistor is must be on average must be exactly the same as the current to the feedback resistor on average. So, this is going to be still V i average by r flowing that way all right, but what have we accomplished by putting the sample and hold in the feedback path? The output Yeah, so V i on average by r is V out of N T s on average divided by r correct. So, that must be a minus actually all right. In other words, uh, so V out of N T s on average is nothing but minus V i on average. 
So what have we accomplished by doing this? We are now able to relate the property of a waveform which is continuous and of course continuous amplitude to discrete time and continuous amplitude. All right. And uh, remember, so as I said, this is called a continuous time delta sigma analog to digital converter. And analog to digital conversion is convert something which is continuous in time and amplitude to something which is discrete in time and amplitude. And uh, we, uh, with this we have come halfway there, right? We have, we have discretized time, but amplitude is still continuous, right? So the next thing uh, a logical progression is to basically put a quantizer here. So you have so sample quantize and hold. Right. In other words, if uh, V x here was doing something like that, the output of the sampler, just the sampler would have, sample and hold would have done this Okay. So, this is the output of the whole output and uh, this this is the quantized output. Right? Now, what comment can we make about uh, the average current to the capacitor the moment you in introduce uh, a quantizer? The current through the capacitor must still be 0 on average and therefore, V i on average by r must still be the same current, I mean the same current must uh, still flow through the feedback resistor except that now uh, and therefore, V out this must still be valid even with a quantizer. Right, so valid even with a quantizer. All right, and therefore, uh, but now V out of T is now no longer continuous amplitude; it is discrete amplitude. Right? So, we now have a system which is discrete both in amplitude and time and uh, therefore, it is a digital quantity right? and uh, right? and uh, it is related to the, pro the average property of the analog waveform. V i of t and therefore, this is an analog to digital converter. right? So, uh, 
if the input waveform v of t v i of t is slow enough then on average v i remains the same as v i of t and therefore the output sequence uh, remains i mean so basically you have converted from yeah the average if you take the output sequence which is quantized right the both in amplitude and time and you average the output sequence you will get a good approximation to the average value of the input waveform and uh, this is the principle behind this is what is called a continuous time so delta sigma converter so if you think about it in a block diagram form we have an integrator the output is sampled and quantized and uh, quantization is basically you can think of it as some error and you feed it back right so remember this is nothing but a integrator with two inputs so this is nothing but a continuous time integrator with two inputs whose one input is the input to be digitized the other input is the output of the quantizer right and uh, so the quantizer is represented by a quantization error and uh, if i call this v and uh, so this is vi of t and therefore v is discrete time discrete amplitude all right and uh, so as uh, if you look at it as now if you look at it as a system you can see that this is a periodically this is a sampler right so this is a linear periodically time varying system right and it is varying at yeah so let's say this is a, a period is ts varying at at fs actually which happens to be 1 over ts all right and uh, uh, when is the uh, the output relevant what are we doing we are taking this continuous time waveform right yeah and we are sampling it at so the output of the integrator is sampled at fs which is the same rate at which uh, which is the rate which is the same as uh, that at which the system is varying all right and uh, so this is what is called a first order and uh, it turns out that delta sigma modulators or delta sigma data converters are extremely important in practice and you're probably carrying maybe 20 of them in your phone um, right now okay we are used all the way from sensor interfaces to uh, uh, to wireless transceivers so to cut a st long story short therefore uh, in many many practical uh, useful applications we have lptv systems of course but what is relevant is the sampled output of an lptv system and what is more the system is sampled at the same rate at which the system is varying all right so uh, so in other words 
So let us start off with uh, see what uh, is so special about uh, uh, this uh, such systems. So, we have the LPTV system, we, we can basically represent it by its Zade expansion. So, we have H0 of J2 pi f. Then we have H minus k of j 2 pi f. This is e to the minus j 2 pi k f s times t. This is h sub k of j 2 pi f. Hmm. So, this is v i of t, this is sorry I forgot about e to the j 2 pi k f s times t and this is I will call, let me call this x of t and y of t. This is the LPTV system. Now, what are we interested? We are interested in sample value of the Yeah, in principle we are interested in sample value of the output. So, this is being sampled at so, we are interested in y of n t s all right and uh, just to uh, refresh your memory these are all linear time invariant filters ok and uh, well we are adding multiple the outputs of multiple branches and then sampling you might as well I mean adding and sampling is the same as sampling and adding. So, what we are going to do is uh, this is this all right. Uh, then what is happening here? We are multiplying two quantities right and then sampling the output. It is equivalent to sampling the individual inputs to the multiplier and then multiplying the two samples correct. So, if you sample this therefore, you can just basically say uh, you can move if we sample this T. Now, if I sample this, at n times T s, what do I get? E to the minus j two pi k f s times n T s. So, what do you get? F s times T s is one. So, what do you get? One. Right, so this is simply equal to one. So likewise, in all these branches, you will basically get all of this will become one.
all right so now what do we uh, we are sampling the outputs of many filters and then adding the samples this is equivalent to moving the addition first and then sampling later right so this is equivalent to H sub 0 of j 2 pi f h sub minus k of j 2 pi f h sub k of j 2 pi f correct this is x of t this is y of nt so what is this now and remember what are all these they are all lti systems right so if you are only interested in the sampled output you can think of an L of the LPTV system as, so this is nothing but x of t going through sigma over k of h sub k of j 2 pi f and the output is sample. So, in other words, the key conclusion is that the sampled output y of NTS of an LPTV system which is also varying with the same frequency can be thought of or can be obtained by exciting an LTI filter, filter uh, let us call this H equivalent of J 2 pi f with x of t right and sampling its all right in other words if i have the same input x of t So, this is the LPTV at f s and this is the equivalent linear time invariant filter right where h equivalent I mean obviously h equivalent depends on the L LPTV system and is chosen to be h sub k of j 2 pi f all right and if i sample the outputs in the same in ts 
I will get the the same samples. All right, and uh, this is uh, uh, this makes life a lot easier, right? Because if you're only interested in the samples, there's no need for you now to worry about all these multiple harmonic transfer functions and all that stuff. It is simply straightforward. I mean, it's uh, if you find h equivalent of j two pi f, right? Uh, which is simply the sum of the harmonic transfer functions of the LPTV system, then you can determine the output samples without any problem, right? Remember one thing though, that only the samples are the same. These are not necessarily the same. You can have different waveforms there. But when you sample it at n times ts, you get the same samples. Does it make sense? All right. And uh, so uh, this makes life easy uh, in many situations, uh, particularly noise analysis, uh, if you are interested only in samples and so on. So we will discuss this in the next class. The key takeaway today is that if you sample the output of an LPTV system at the same rate, then those samples are indistinguishable from what you would get if you sampled the output of an appropriately chosen linear time invariant filter. And what is that appropriately chosen uh, linear time invariant filter? It is that filter whose frequency response or whose transfer function is simply the same as the sum of the harmonic transfer functions of uh, the L LPTV system.